Hello everyone. Welcome back to AAS Publishing. We're going to start a two-part video series on the Astrophysical Journal, APJ, APJ. I'm going to break this up into two sections. One is origins to 2014, and we'll see why 2014 here in a few seconds. Uh, and then in the second part, we're going to cover the APJ in the current epoch. So origins to 2014. On the left is volume one of the Astrophysical Journal, an international review of spectroscopy and astronomical physics. And listed there is the editors, the assistant editors, the associate editors, uh, and this is volume one. And um, sort of an interesting sidelight is that the uh, University of Chicago Press corrected Hales and Keeler's spelling, decreeing that the word astrophysics uh, was one word, not two, uh, and it has remained that way ever since. And so the Astrophysical Journal. Uh, and then on the right is the last printed edition of the APJ. Uh, this was in December uh, 20th, 2014, volume number 797. So we have uh, roughly 800 uh, volumes between the first volume and the last printed one. And on the last printed one, the scientific editors at the time uh, signed the front cover, and uh, there are the signatures, and there are some of the articles in the um, last printed version of the APJ APJ. All right, so let's go ahead and cover the history between this first journal and the last. So we start in 1895. It's published 10 times a year and it costs you four bucks per year. <laughs> there are no page charges and there are 25 free reprints. Whoa, what a deal. Uh, and as we'll see here in a bit, you know, the APJ, APJ was um, actually a money losing venture for, for quite a while, required um, sustenance from somewhere uh, before it became uh, cost neutral. Uh, so we start, but we didn't even have a table of contents until 1895. Then in 1899, what was then called the Astronomical and Astrophysical Society of America was founded. That's going to get renamed here in a little bit. Uh, in 1905, Edwin Frost becomes the editor uh, instead of uh, uh, Hale. Um, then we have the first index which covered the first uh, 12 years or so, 1895 to 1907, and it cost you a buck 50. 1909, subscriptions are up a little bit, $5 per year, and again, because it's a money-losing venture, the University of Chicago Press is actually covering 60% uh, of the cost. Actually, University of Chicago is covering 60% of the cost. In 1910, we have the implementation of page charges for an unusual number of illustrations kind of vague on what that is. Uh, and in 1912, Gale. Uh, Henry Gale becomes the editor. And of course, there was plenty of um, jokes at the time, because if you look at the names, last names, of the first three editors of the APJ, we have Hale, Frost, and Gale. Okay, lots of weather jokes, winter weather jokes on uh, Hale, Frost, and Gale. 1914, page charges for unusual expenses comes in, and the name is of the society is changed from uh, what it was in 1899 to its current name, which is the American Astronomical Society. So the AASB gets its uh, current name in 1914. Up until 1920, there were no abstracts. You just started writing on your article. Uh, from the go. And it was in 1920 is where the tradition of abstracts begin. 1921, there was uniform page charges above the first $50. So in some sense, the first 50 bucks was free. And then after that, you had to cover the rest. 1932, Otto Struve becomes the editor. 1940, microfilm starts. So uh, always on sort of the cutting edge of the technology at the time. In 1941, the volume is increasing, so it begins to be published bi-monthly. Uh, the line density is increased, so not only uh, more frequently, but the space between lines is decreased. We go from 37 lines 
per inch to 53 lines per inch. In 1947, uh, William Morgan, W.W. W. Morgan, becomes the editor. Subscriptions now cost $12 a year, and for the first time, if you were a AAS member, you got a break on the price, and so it was $7 per year for uh, AAS members. And so this is sort of the beginning of a long, fruitful partnership between the APJ, the Astrophysical Journal, and the AAS. 1952, Chandra becomes the editor. Uh, with the editorial board selected by the AAS. So again, tightening that relationship between the AAS and the Astrophysical Journal. In 1953, APJ Supplements is started. Uh, and we do have a video series on the APJ Supplement, so I encourage you to take a look at that if you're interested in uh, APJ Sub. 1955, subscriptions are now $15 a year. Uh, and sort of a... Beginning of the uniform page charges. So page charges are 10 bucks per page of text, uh, and then 15 bucks for math, tables, figures, etc. In 1958, Letters to the Editor uh, is started, uh, and we also have a video series on APJ Letters, so go ahead and check that out if you like. So now we're up to 1958 onwards. 1963 is when, uh, as we saw in the first volume, it had a subtitle, An International Review of Spectroscopy and Astronomical Physics. That is now dropped from the title, and we are left with the Astrophysical Journal as we know it today, um, starting in 1963. It's published monthly in 1966. In 1971, it's a major transition year. Uh, Helmet App becomes the editor. It's published uh, twice monthly. 1972, so this is all sort of late 1971-1972, and the ownership is transferred from the University of Chicago Press to the AAS. So it's in 1972 that the AAS owns uh, the APJ. Page sizes are increased, so we go from 6.5 by 9.5 to an 8 by 10.5. Microfiche is started. In 1984, the page size is uh, again increased to what is now a standardized page size uh, that we're all used to. This is 8.5 by 11 and a quarter inches. In 1987, begins the first motion toward being digital, toward being online, uh, with the online listing of articles that are published. That's all just a listing of the articles, nothing more, uh, in 87. In 1988, the Letters to the editor is just renamed Letters. And so we have APJ Letters, APJ Letters, um, as it goes forward. In 1990 uh, is when we begin publishing three times a month. This is still the current practice of three times a month, and so that begins in 1990. 1991, again, the motion toward going all digital, and this is when submissions with AAS Tech uh, and Law Tech begin. Uh, with the push toward a standardization of AAS tech and law tech as a way of submitting journals. So that's in 1991. 1992, videotape uh, series was started. Um, uh, and this, you know, I'll just make a comment here. This was, um, uh, you know, there, there, there weren't codecs for uh, movies, at least in some standardized form. Uh, and so what people would do, and I can re recall this, uh, is you would run the movie on your screen, your uh, Sun Spark station or your Silicon Graphics workstation or whatever it may be at the time, uh, and you stuck a physical camera and you recorded the screen <laughs> of your monitor. Uh, and then you would submit those in. And so um, that's how videos were done in the beginning. In 1993, we had uh, CD bomb series were started. In 1995, the very first URL appears uh, in an APJ article and in an AJ article in that year. And so this is the first appearance of the World Wide Web, WWW, in 1995. Uh, it also begins the first digital typesetting of manuscripts from the LaTeX and the AAS Tech macros. And Letters takes the first leap, and Letters becomes available online. It is still printed, but you can now get Letters online. By 1998, uh, multimedia files online were 
supported and so this was the demise of the video and the CD-ROM uh, series and both those were discontinued in 1998 as now you can start doing a lot more stuff online. In 1999, Rob Kennicutt becomes the editor-in-chief uh, and the peer review process goes completely online. And so up until that point, there was still um, paper. You would still mail paper, you would still do your communication on paper. And that went away in 1999 uh, as the world gets the World Wide Web, gets a nervous system. In 2000, Greg Schwartz becomes the data editor, and so we begin the process of uh, recognizing the importance of data. The, that means online and otherwise, and so Greg headed that up in uh, the year 2000. Accompanied with that, we begin to have machine-readable tables and the advent of online-only content. So you could have your article, just like you do today, and there can be content uh, such as a machine-readable table, there are other forms uh, that are available online only and not necessarily in the uh, uh, printed article. In 2002 is the first ethics statement on uh, policies on behaving oneself <laughs> as an author, uh, behaving oneself as a referee, um, and so on. In 2003 is when we begin the system that is still with us today. This is the scientific editor system. Uh, where people are hired in um, typically for three-year contracts, uh, and it goes from there. And we had a series of scientific editors begin that stint. So that's in 2003. And in 2006, Ethan Vishniak becomes editor-in-chief. Ethan is still the editor-in-chief. Um, in 2009, letters go online completely. In fact, it's only available online. So letters takes that first... Uh, brave jump into the uh, online digital world. In 2011, since uh, there's an event coming um, in a few scant years, there's a shift um, uh, going toward digital where there are no more what are called page charges. We still call them page charges. I get it. People still still say page charges, um, but they really aren't page charges. What they really are are quanta. Uh, and a quanta is, uh, in 2011, was defined as 350 words. So that's one text quanta, and that was 40 bucks. Uh, and then $40 per digital quantum. So that would be a figure, a table, a plate, etc. 2012, that price goes down on the quanta to 35 bucks for 350 words, 35 bucks per digital quanta. In 2014, that price is further reduced. So again, uh, because of the efficiency of doing things digitally, the prices were going down, uh, and it's the price that is currently there, which is 30 bucks for 350 word digital quanta and 35 bucks for um, figures, tables, etc. And then in 2014. Uh, which is going to be the end of this video series, and we'll pick it up in the next one, is when the last printed version of the APJ was done. And so that was sort of the motif of the opening slide. I'll show it again, uh, as we have covered from Volume 1 in 1895 to Volume 797 in late 2014. So that's what I want to say on covering sort of a, uh, an abbreviated history of the APJ. I'll put a couple of um, URLs in the description below where you can click and uh, get a more detailed um, description of particularly the early years of the APJ uh, up until its uh, centennial uh, and onwards. Okay, so that's what I want to say. I'll see you on the next one as we cover the APJ in the modern era. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.